Welcome back to the Charlie's Cavalry Coaches Show. I'm your host, John Moses. Well, the men's basketball team currently stands in fourth in the Northeast 10. And to join us now is head men's basketball coach, Ted O'Talling. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, Coach, when we last spoke, your team was 8-2, and two, coming off road wins against Nyack and Southern Connecticut State. Um, but since then, you've gone 5-5 five and five over the winter break period. Over the last 10 games, what have you learned about your team? Yeah, you know, I've actually thought we've played well, especially for uh, good stretches on defensive end. We've also had a very challenging schedule. We've played a bulk of the teams on our schedule have been, uh, you know, higher in the standings. But, um, you know, I think we've been pretty consistent on defense, a little inconsistent on offense. But I think, uh, I think we've kind of weathered the storm pretty well to, to get where we are and have a chance to move up the standings here in our last six games. Well, one win that really stuck out to me from that winter break period was the January 3rd, 55-49 win over Stonehill, right. who's now tied for second in the Northeast 10. What went right for your team on that day? Well, not much went right in the first half. You know, we scored 17 points at the half. Um, but what really has characterized our team is, you know, we've, we've been down in games by 12 in the first half or 12 in the second half, and we've just managed to play possession by possession, uh, not be in a hurry to win the game. Um, and that was what happened at, at Stonehill. It gave us a lot of confidence that we could come back from deficits, especially against good teams on the road. Um, and then we had just a great effort by Eric Anderson in that game. I think he had, uh, you know, seven block shots. Um, but, you know, he had a great effort from London Barrett in that game. Um, and that's been a big part of our success has been our interior offense and defense has really progressed and really uh, done a great job for us. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit more about Eric. I think in his last game at Charter Gymnasium against St. Anselm, we really saw the entire package, 11 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists. Right. Um, tell us about his performance the last couple of weeks here and what you've really seen from him. Yeah, Eric is such a uh, talented player. Uh, he's very gifted athletically. Um, I think what separates him from a lot of college freshmen is that he has a very, very high IQ. So he's a very good thinker. He can think on his feet. He's very curious about the game, which uh, is always fun to see in, in young players. And because of that, he's going to have a great chance to develop, um, I think, as a high-level player. Um, but over the last few weeks, he's been great. You know, we've really gone to him in the post much, much more here uh, later in the season. He's really provided scoring inside. He's really provided some assists, getting in inside and out. And he's really done a great job on the weak side rebounding. So when we do miss, you know, he gets in that wedge position where he's got a lot of offensive rebound and putbacks. But... You know, he's someone we feel very confident with giving him the ball, making great decisions. Um, you know, he's up to 16 assists, 19 turnovers over his last 10 games, which, um, you know, is great for a freshman with size and someone that you're relying on to, uh, you know, do good things with the ball. Now, from when you've seen him from day one, when you first got your hands on him until now, what is the improvement that you really see that really sticks out to you? Yeah, I think he's gained a lot of confidence. Um, you know, when we <coughs> recruited him, he was about an inch and a half shorter as well, so he's grown since we recruited him last spring and, and signed him. Um, but I think his confidence, just with the minutes he's played, I think um, you know, we're just seeing the same things every day in practice, um, and his work ethic every day in practice has allowed that. But he, I think his confidence level has just improved um, you know, each day, each week, each month. And it's gotten to a point where I think he's one of the, you know, the better freshmen in our league. You've been without Samir McDaniels since uh, the game against Franklin Pierce. Uh, what do you think your team really misses most without him? Yeah, Samir's out with a concussion, and uh, you know he's on his way to recovery. Our training staff has done a great job with um, you know just handling uh, all the measures to take him getting back. You know we do miss a lot of what he brings to the table. You know he's always good for at least two offensive rebounds a game, digging some out. He's great on the defensive end where he's just physical, strong, digs out loose balls. You know he got a concussion taking a charge. He's always good for at least one charge a game, and he just has a presence about him and a toughness that I think, uh, you know, in college basketball is needed in order to be as good as you want. But, you know, we do miss his physicality, his toughness, and obviously his production is uh, key as well. Right. I think that toughness in the post, I, I like when you're, when you're able to post him up against right. smaller guards sometimes. That's really a difference maker. You have three different guys that yes. you feel comfortable posting up. Not every team can say that. No, they don't. And, uh, you know, at some point with three guys that can post up, you have a mismatch on the floor, you know. And a lot of times when he enters the game, he does have a small forward or a guard guarding him. And we do look to get into him, and you know he's a lot like Eric. We trust him with the ball. He, he can see, and he can pass, and he makes great decisions, uh, and he also can score around the rim too. So, uh, you know, we miss him, but we've had great contributions from some guys like Ashanti to pass, who's really stepped into a role and done really, really well. You know, in Ashanti's last few games, he's you know 60% from the field, 50 from three, 
one turnover in his last 30 minutes. Boy, that's so, huge. Yeah, so he's really provided a great spark. And, uh, you know, when, when you know, like most college programs, you're going to have some people that you're missing, whether it's injuries or whatever it might be. Um, and good teams like ours, you know, find someone to fill that role. And Shani stepped up and been ready. Yeah, Shanti's really stepped up. But talk a little about your bench play and what they bring to the table and how you like to use your bench throughout the game. Yeah, you know, our five starters play a lot of minutes, and uh, we do insert in the lineup three guys at a time, you know, usually Sean Harris, Cyrus James, and now Ashanti to pass. Um, you know, we're, we still want the defensive focus to maintain what we have. Um, and then we're just looking for good shot selection, handle the ball, um, and we've been provided with some good sparks off the bench from these guys. Shani shooting threes, Cyrus with offensive rebounds, you know, Sean Harris has been very good taking care of the basketball. Um, so we've had some good production from all those guys uh, when they've been inserted. So let's take a, cl- a little bit of a closer look at your most recent game against right. Adelphi. A, a tough loss. Right. Um, you got out to a really hot start in this game, and you, know, you got out to a 12-0 run. Yeah, you know, we had a poor performance at UMass Lowell on the road, and I was really happy the way we responded. You know, we came out, held them scoreless for the first 7 minutes and 13 seconds, you know, went on a 12-0 run to start the game. Great sign for a very young team. Um, and really was, was sparked by our defense. You see great defensive help by London Barek. And then just our ball movement was very good. When Justin Exum shoots it in, obviously we're a, a very, very difficult team to beat. But, uh, you know, our defense was great. Our paint protection, our rim protection was, was really, really good. And I just thought we were just very patient on offense against a very good defensive team. It really guards the ball hard really makes it hard to get into the paint and get near the rim. Mm. I just thought our patience and our execution was very, very good, and fortunately we made the shots that were, uh, were given to us. Yeah, one of the things I really like, a lot of help defense in the post. I mean, they tried to post up Bradley Simpson a number right. of times early in the game, Narn McDonald later, but yep. you know, the helps always seem to be there. Yeah, we are, a, um, you know, we are a help team. We are a defensive rebound team. That's a great shot by Jeff Atkins. You know, in Jeff's last 10 games, he's shooting 47% from three. 7 for 15, so he's wow. you know, he's really improved that part of his game. You know, they called two timeouts early in the game, but I was really happy with the way we came out and responded after a, a difficult loss. Um, you know, I think that's the biggest progress, you know, the, the most progress we've made is we've handled disappointment, whether it's in games or after games or in practice. You know, we've really handled disappointment well and just moved on with a, with a level of toughness that, um, you know, belies our youth, so to speak. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you were down eight points at halftime, but your guys just sort of seemed to stay into it. You know, they just played through the issues. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of penetration happening. A lot of jump shots from your team in this game against Adelphi. I mean, I thought Adelphi's half-court defense was markedly better from the first matchup. Yeah, definitely. And and they're a very good defensive team. They're very hard into the ball. Uh, They're a first-man help team. But in this game in general, I think both teams really made teams take contested jump shots. You know, we gave them some points with some silly fouls, which I think hurt us, uh, especially at the uh, with the final score. But uh, but overall, um, you know, our toughness has, has really come through. And we do talk about not being in a hurry to win the game. You know, teams are going to go on runs. Uh, it's not something that you, we should become unraveled with. It's something just, you know, methodically play possession by possession. And it was great to see in this game. You know, 12-0 run. They go up by 8 at halftime. You know, we're down 10 with about 8 minutes left. And our guys were just comfortable enough just to plodding away, and uh, gave ourselves a chance to win at the end. I was really impressed by Justin Exum's mental toughness down the stretch. Right. And we get a great look at it. You know, He gets closed out real close on this next highlight here, and he still knocks down the shot. Yeah, Justin's an elite-level shooter. You know, he's, you know, if he's not one on the scouting report, he's, he's 1B. Um, so he is a huge part of our offensive focus. He's a great shooter. He's averaging about three threes a game right now at a high percentage. But um, in a big shot here, puts us up by two. And a, you know, an even better pass by Jeremy Williams. Um, and you know, I love our bench. You know, this has really been why we've been good as well as just the excitement our guys have for each other um, has really been good this, this year. Yeah, I just love the energy coming from your bench. You know, guys were on their feet the last three, four minutes right. of the game. A chance of defense. Yep. I mean, that's just really nice to yeah, see. Yeah, it's guy. great. And as a coach, you know, you hope you have a team that uh, is unselfish. You know, plays for each other. And I think that's what we've really developed here over this past year is just a um, you know, hard-playing team that's very unselfish, and obviously you see that with the guys on the bench. Well, in this next highlight here, we get a great look at the final couple possessions here. Um, it's a one-point game. It's a two-point lead after Justin Exum hits right. the four-point play. Um, tell us about what this next sequence is like. 
Yeah, you know what? Uh, you know, we do play with a bigger four, and Eric uh, is matched up with smaller players a lot. And uh, you know, they did some ball screen action and, and threw behind uh, the ball screen here. It's an indirect action. Um, and Chris Wranglin, who's a heck of a player, made a heck of a shot. Uh, we still had a chance to win the game, so the game wasn't over uh, at that point. But uh, you know, he's a very good player, made a very big shot. Um, but then we had a chance to win it again. You know, yeah, so you're, so you're in this timeout here after the Wrangling three. What are you telling your team about? Um, next possession. So, you know, we want to handle disappointment the right way. And in that case, you can't do anything about the shot. It's what's focused on next. And, um, you know, you look into our eyes of our, our guys, and Jeremy Williams has really been part of this. Like, you, know, you just you look into their eyes and you know things are going to be okay. We're going to get a good shot. And a lot of times, basketball comes down to makes and misses. I thought that's what this game was all about. And unfortunately for us, they just made a few more at the end. So how do you feel about how this possession turned out for you on offense? I, I think it turned out well. I think Justin had a very good look at it. You know, we had a chance for an offensive rebound. Um, you know, we didn't have to call a timeout to, you know, get a good shot again. Justin had a great straight line drive. And uh, I'm confident with Justin taking shots like that in order for us to win. Unfortunately, it didn't go in, but I know we'll have that chance again. You know, next time we'll go in. Well... Other than pace this weekend, the entire month of February is against opponents you've already beaten this season. Right. Uh, how does that affect your preparation? Does that worry you at all that you're playing a bunch of teams you've already beaten? No, and um, you know we have a one-game season coming up on Saturday, so we really don't focus too much on you know what's in the future. Um, pace is a very, very challenging game for us. Very good in the interior. Probably one of the most physical teams, both offensively and defensively, near the rim. So that'll be a huge challenge for us. And. They have a point guard that's playing extremely well, shooting the ball well, and really getting his guys involved. So this will be a great challenge for us. Um, but we are going through the portion of our season where we've seen these teams once already. Um, both coaches have the luxury of looking back at the film and seeing what works and what doesn't. So it'll be interesting to see what adjustments are made in defending us um, and what offensive principles they might add to, uh, to their game plan. Um, and we'll look back and try and see some things that we could have done better or done the same. But more often than not, this time of year, is that you do what you do, you just do it a little bit better and with some changes here and there. But that's our focus, just to do what we do. We've had a great year up to this point. If we can do what we do and just do it a little bit better, hopefully we'll have some success here in the last six games. Let's talk a little bit more about the point guard matchup that's going to happen this, this Saturday. Denzel right. Primus Denovich, very quick. Yes. You, know, you said he's been playing well his last couple of weeks against yep. Jeff Adkins, who, as you mentioned, shooting 47% from three-point range his last 10 games. Yep. Talk a little bit about that matchup. How do you think it'll key into the final score? Yeah, you know, I think they're very similar players. I think they both bring uh, similar things to the table for each for each team. Jeff has been great in transition for us. You know, he really does get to the rim and finish. He's shooting over 54% from the field for the year for a 5'11 guard. That's incredible. Uh, and also, he's really improved his three-point shooting. Um, he's begun to manage the game a little bit better over the year. That's what we really need him to do really, really well. Um, so even more than stats in this game, just to manage our team, calm our team down, get the ball in the right spots. And obviously he's been a great defender all year. I expect that to continue, but it'll be a great challenge for him against uh, their point guard. He's, he's a very good player. Well, now that you've played every team in the conference, what have you observed about how your team stacks up with the rest of the Northeast 10? Yeah, the league is very balanced. Um, you know, I think you and I talked about this before. It really comes down to either an eight minute game or sometimes with some of the better teams we play in a four minute game, and at that point, it's who can execute well, who can defend, who can protect their paint. Sometimes it comes down to who's committed more fouls before that four-minute mark where another foul puts you in the bonus and gives away free points. But, uh, you no, know, I, I expect close games from here on out. And if we can be the team that executes in the, you know, that four-minute stretch and makes some shots, I feel pretty comfortable that we'll have a chance to win. But a uh, very competitive league this year, um, I think, as you can see the standings. Well, Coach, thanks so much for your time. Good luck coming up. Great. Thanks so much. We'll be right back. This is the Charlie's Cavalry Coaches Show.